Hello, friends, and welcome again to another single serving tabletop adventure from Queen's Court Games. Yay! I'm Aaron, your storyteller, and tonight they're rowdy, they're randy, they're rakish. It's the crew of the owl as we play Lord Blackbird, a sky high tale of adventure in the wild blue yonder by John Harper. As always, you can find a link to the scenario by popping exclamation point scenario in chat or taking a peek at the show notes if you're catching up on YouTube or one of our podcasts. In the meantime, before we begin, let me introduce you to our incredible cast. She's the lip gloss ship boss, leaving lords at a loss as Cyrus Vance, our very best friend, Syrinx. Hi, that was nice. <laughs> And with her, the shy and spry knee-high gadfly who vies with the sky as pilot Snargle, QCG's very own Zoe. Hello! Keeping those engines purring, your all-year high-gear engineer in the ship's rear. By the way, did you know that Kinshasa is the capital of Zaire? As mechanical maestro, it is Kale Arkham Rowan. Hello, that was incredible, Aaron. I can't wait to see what, what the next one is. And of course, we cannot forget our intrepid passengers. He's the mobile noble, the magician patrician, the forlorn highborn, as the recently revealed Lord Blackbird, the utterly wonderful Gabe. Hi, I need to recover my lungs briefly, so I'm going to mute again now. <laughs> And at his side, day or night, she's here to fight because she's muscle and hustle that's down to tussle. Her favorite British philosopher is Bertrand Russell. It's Naomi Bishop. It's V. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, these are all true facts about me as a human. You can, of course, find their a social... Uh, I can. I'm going to get it right. You can, of course, find their assorted social medias by putting exclamation point cast in chat on Twitch or just find it in the show notes. If you're catching us on YouTube, don't you type anything. Just go click right over there. Now, we are telling the story of Lord Blackbird in sequence, which means if you haven't heard the first episode or the second episode or the other episodes, please, my friend, go head over to YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Catch yourself up yourself a favor you don't want to be lost here asking what's going on like come on like you can catch up with us it's cool we'll wait right we're all good right yeah see time. all these patient faces are they back i think they're back i heard hey, something welcome back all right, well, this is normally the part of the adventure where I say, let me tell you a story. But as we are beginning in the middle of things, I will let my wonderful crew members catch us up. Do I have a volunteer to recap what happened in the last episode? I will get the D6 out and uh, nominate one of you at random. I did it last time, Bagsy, not me. Somebody please talk about me, thanks, bye. Oh, that's cool, that's right. I can get a D4 out because... Um, that, that narrows it down considerably. Uh, v, left to right or right to left on my overview? Left to right. Left to right it is. And the Satan die says, Syrinx. All right, partners, buckle up. I have exactly eight lines of notes. Let's go. <laughs> um, so... First up, we decided that we needed to stop at a another sky city to uh, get some supplies, get the ship prepared for our long journey to deliver our dearest Lord Bradbird uh, and sidekick um, to the uh, Pirate King. Um, but before we can actually settle on things, uh, our dear Snargle here uh, suggested a wonderful city called uh, The Hard Goodbye, uh, which we kind of were like, eh, okay, it's a, it's a goblin city. Uh, it'll be fun. Uh, there are some uh, very talented goblin people there who can help us with the ship, or so Snargle said. Um, we were attacked by a sky squid. Uh, luckily for us, we are all very capable people uh, on the ship. So with a few uh, hits, from our dearest Naomi with a few shooting and a few uh, sky uh, swirling maneuvers from Snargle uh, with a very romantic, if I can say or not, moment in the uh, impromptu air vent. 
uh, with uh, myself and our dearest Lord Blackbird, uh, we managed to make the sky squid into sky calamari, uh, basically. Or, well, we can make it calamari if we want to. Um, after that, we all kind of split up and have a few intense or a bit less intense conversations. Uh, a few threats were hurled. Uh, I won't say who. Um, I definitely you won't say You can talk about who. yourself. You can talk about yourself. That's Okay, fine. so Naomi tr threatened a few oh, people on the ship. Oh, no, I'm pretty um, sure it was you who But you know, but it's fine. Past it's is the fine. Past. fine. No, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and after that, we all went back to see a very wholesome moment between Snargle and Nathaniel, uh, where everyone reacted in their own way um my protective mommy sky captain instincts kicked in but that's all right um and uh basically then we are arriving at the hard goodbye and we were seeing the dingy sign um almost a neon sign i can't quite know but uh a dingy sign that said that we are arriving at the city there are there are two things that you forgot. First, we managed to find Kale. <laughs> that was a uh, find. Yeah, um, they wow. found us. Well, I no, I mean they locked themselves in a vent, and you happened upon them. So, you know, uh, and also I think the most important part that you're forgetting about last episode, Squingers. How could you not mention the Swingers? Oh, sorry, Squand. Squands and Swingers. Yeah, the <laughs> this Swingers like on a, the Squand. This feels like a Sesame Street episode where we reintroduce new words as we play. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. There was one more word. We had an own meaning for it. I forgot. We did have another word. I can't remember it either right now. It was a. I have good news. It was a verb. It I remembered, a verb. <laughs> and it's going to come up. Oh, oh no. <laughs> okay, okay, right. Well, at least Aaron knows, but. Now this puts me on edge because we definitely none won't of know us when that's going to come up. Yeah, we'll recognize it. Yeah, we'll know it when we hear it. <laughs> we will oh, immediately. Yeah, yeah. Until no, then, however, no the tension is building. I remembered. I'm not going to say it. Oh but no, I don't know what the word is. Mm -hmm. So are Rowan in, and I, we're like, are you guys in cahoots with each other right now? I don't know if I appreciate that. Hail as your captain, I command you. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Do Okay, Did no, we no, no, bribe no. the GM? Is that what's happening here? <laughs> I am above reproach. Uh, uh. You, especially in V, know very well that we've been, we've been gaming together <laughs> long enough. I cannot be bought. Uh, on the topic of things that can be bought, though, this is the long goodbye, the hard goodbye. The hard goodbye? The hard, yeah, goodbye. The hard goodbye. I thought it was the long goodbye, but um, if, if uh, Syrinx took notes and she She's I wrote like the right. hard goodbye twice. I'm certain of it. Twice. The, hard goodbye. Uh, the, long, the long goodbye is a movie. I don't, anyway, uh, we arrive at the hard goodbye. And unlike myself, who cannot be bribed, the city is full of people selling anything, everything you want for a price. It is a towering, haphazard, a little wobbly mix of most icely the golden saucer a shanty town dozens upon dozens of, of shacks and all manner of just very poorly constructed buildings stacked on top of each other teeming from top to bottom with goblins now there were three problems that you had to solve by arriving here first you were going to find a guide who could take you through the remnants to the lair of Uriah Flint. That part of space is not at all charted. Giant chunks of a destroyed planet flying around. God only knows what monsters are in there. I mean, I don't, but you do. Or I, I know, but you don't. So you're going to want an expert, uh, someone who can help you or give you a map at the very least. Second, the owl, after its capture, is not in super great shape. Fuel tank's a little empty. The sky squid kind of beat it up. And if it were me, Captain, I don't want to presume anything about your judgment, but if it were me, I would want to make sure that my ship was in the tippityest, toppityest shape before we departed for um, certain danger. Right? And third, Snargle's running out of bug jam. Snargle made a shitload of sandwiches for y'all. And on the topic of putting 
fuel in the owl, you're going to want to put jam in your goblin. You will need provisions. Now, I will uh, let you decide how you want to tackle those problems. If you want to split up and go around and find things, if you need to uh, stick together, that way no one gets lost or accosted. That is entirely up to you, but those are the three objectives that you should meet before returning to the ship. Not split up and so that no one can actually get stuck in a random airship, uh, then, I mean, could be an idea, you know. Not that it happened in the past, but... No, no, not at all. No. No. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be ridiculous. I think Snargle will be our guide uh, through the city and through the goblins. Um, And as far as I'm concerned, I say that we don't split up at the moment. Yeah, I I, I think if we we were to split up, I I don't think Cyrus would be super happy with the way that I would want to split things up because I wouldn't feel comfortable leaving Lord Blackbird, obviously. And Cyrus doesn't like me. Even being a (laughs) <laughs> but we're not splitting up so it's not a problem it's not mm-hmm. a problem you're right it's not well Scar- uh, Snargle as the um, duly appointed captain's orders you're the expert here why don't you describe for us what the goblin docking situation is now like I, we can guarantee it's not like organized that it's, this isn't an imperial port this isn't even like a, like a pirate port right okay. so Goodness, no. It's like finding a parking spot in rush hour traffic down a busy street. Uh, You basically try to get in where you can, and if you cut someone off doing it, um, that's just how it has to be. Like, they they should have been faster. Uh, So, (laughs) as we arrive, um, we're coming into to dock, I managed to slip into this space. Uh, It's a little snug for the owl. Getting out is probably going to be hard but I'm also quite talented as a pilot, so I'm not too worried about it. But I get in there and I immediately hit this button on the dashboard that brings up a sign that just says, um, selling goods. And uh, when when this sign comes up, uh, I'm specifically indicating the squid tentacles hanging off of our ship, because I'm hoping that we can get a pretty penny off of these and uh, (laughs) are able to maybe refuel with the the calamari bounty oh calamari bounty yeah that's like a a rule of the universe right gotta pay the calamari bounty well uh, I will say that there are two things that will happen as you lower the ramp and mean to exit the owl and this uh, this impromptu shop springs into existence around the owl first you are immediately accosted by a trio of goblins it's hard to tell if they're just small or actually goblin children um, it's not entirely clear to me that Snargle has seen a goblin child in a while, let alone the rest of you to know what it looks like. But uh, they're they're short and stocky and a little menacing in a Dickensian way. <clears throat> I'm getting the voice ready. And before you have a chance to even put one foot down, the leader among them, the tallest, slightly round, a, a pudgy green face, uh, not unlike... um. If you imagine for a moment that you gave a chipmunk a handful of almonds and the goblin immediately barks out, Hey, you're going to be the parking pass, right? Hand extended. What? This place doesn't require parking passes. Mm, island parking permit. I, I've been here before. That's This is a new law. This is a, I do not subscribe to it. I have my rights. And I'm going to pull out a piece of paper Unfold it really quickly, fold it back up, stick it back in my pocket. Would you like to make a deception roll of some kind for that? Yeah. All right. Deception for goblin. Uh, Any kind of social pool you can put together. Yeah. I think uh, definitely at that moment as well, uh, Cyrus will be walking and standing behind Snargle, kind of getting ready to do the intimidating act if this doesn't work out. Mm. And then maybe behind Cyrus is the other intimidating person <laughs> on the ship. Lord Blackbird, right? Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't look, I would call Lord Blackbird a lot of things. 
intimidating wouldn't necessarily be one of them. Listen, I can write a very strongly worded letter. I'll have you. Know. <laughs> it has. You're writing a letter. You pass it to the guys. Yes, this, sir. <laughs> it's, well, quite. It would be double sided. And, and I would definitely have the lavender scented paper out because this seems like it's important, Ooh. Cyrus. Yeah. I'm going and, to splurge on the lavender paper. Yes, Whoa. absolutely. And also, also, it would say to whom it may concern because that, you know, it's, I'm not no, going to no, no. like give you like the, a title, right? To whom it will concern. Yes. Oh. Uh, just going to pretend that that is happening in character and the two of you are grammar <laughs> swabbling behind Lord Blackbird. But I have some bad news, uh, two sets of bad news, actually. One, as good as the uh, the litter idea is, it, the odds of these goblins, if they are children, or even if they're just goblins, being able to read quite low. And second, Zoe has a dice result for us. So, Snargle, how'd you do? Uh, well, I rolled five dice without actually having to spend any. So, uh, obviously, I have some skills in bluffing and whatnot. However, I rolled three ones and only got one success total. So, uh, that's how that uh... went. The sky gods are not in your favor, and you know what? It's um, it's been a while since you've been here. the The normal scam and hustle game has been evolving. So you try to pull, uh, you know, move one seventy two fake paperwork, and the goblins not have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, no, I've been around longer than that. Let me see that paper. You want to roll that out again? Because hmm? I bet it just is a shopping list, right? If it's blank at all. Look, uh, permits, fine. You don't want to pay it? That's great. And he starts whistling. And you see a, a, like a teetering mass of goblins. You look like a rat king where they, they're indistinguishable from where one starts and the other begins. It, it could be six large goblins. Is it 12 smaller goblins? Does one of them have too many feet? Hey, there's an odd number of limbs. Regardless, they come just skittering out as one solid unit and start to brandish tools that one might use to disassemble a ship. Hey, look. Ooh. Excuse my uh, associate here. Uh, it's been quite some time since they've been here. However, I don't think parking permits are that necessary in a city like this. However, to let you off, I can give you a few of the things we caught on the way here. I think they're worth more than money. The lead goblin first makes an elaborate smug wink at Snargle. Reaches into his pocket, rips open a piece of paper and says, no, according to section 172 of the uh, long, hard goodbye uh, municipal code, slams it shut. Right, can you open that Parking paper again? Parking fees can only be paid in cash. Right, yeah, buddy. Can you open the paper again? Is it a shopping list? <laughs> Uh, as this interaction continues, are you going to try to uh, intimidate this uh, this young fellow, or, or engage in some negotiation? What kind of dice pull would you like to put together as you tire, as you attempt to out scamp the scamp who's out scamping your scamp? <laughs> I think I I'm not good at negotiating. I think the only thing I know to do is kind of intimidate him, um, and if that doesn't work, then um, someone else will need to step in. <laughs> Can I assist? Yeah, if you have um, a skill that you think applies and some mm -hmm. spare dice in your pool, you can uh, add one dice to uh, whatever roll the good captain comes up with. That applies for all of you. So uh, yeah, just give me a reason how, how you might be helping out and you can you can buff those odds. I mean, I'm a bodyguard and one of my abilities, uh, one of my traits is threats. So this is a threat against us and uh, our, our ability to travel to the remnants. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, so as Cyrus is, you know, preparing, I just kind of like stand up and I just like crack my knuckles and just like come right up next to her and like wring my hands and just, mm, really, really, just to kind of like help this uh, negotiation, we'll call it. Listen here, you little shit. You take this ship apart. I'm taking you apart. <laughs> I don't need to say that many words. Those uh, are no, those I'm, are words for somebody who does not have sledgehammer fists. I'm I'm translating from from knuckle to oh that oh, was actually <laughs> that was a really good <laughs> knuckle crack. That was good. Translating from knuckle to goblin, yes. Uh, Nathaniel Kale, did you want to hop on board there? I saw some pensive faces. 
Lady. Something I'd like to do while this while this is happening, not directly to to help with these roles, but potentially to make a separate one. So I'll let this one happen first. For sure. Anything um, from you, my lord? So, um, as is the way, you know, we're we're in a new place. I have this lovely sort of leather bound book with me. And, and well, I was saving it for later. I was going to go and find a nice spot to maybe just, you know, have a moment. <laughs> but apparently we're not doing that. So, yay. Um, I'm going to pull out this little leather bound tome and just sort of flick through it and give the goblin a look and then look back to Cyrus and say, well, according to the municipal, municipal codes that every, um, every settlement should be using by now that has been implemented for at least um, uh, four years, uh, parking permits were actually phased out for the new fungible tokens. So, uh, unfortunately, that's not going to, shall we say, fly. Ooh, plus one for the fungible joke, minus one for the pun, back to a net zero. Uh, Why well, I presume that Lord Blackbird is an expert in municipal codes applied uh, empire-wide because you were in the fucking room when they wrote them in Parliament. Syrinx, sorry, uh, Captain Vance, how'd that pool come out? Yes, all right. Uh, assuming I can use the things uh, having to do with haggling, deception, and intimidating them. All right. And then plus two from your loyal bodyguard and yes. uh, your your wistful maybe boyfriend. Mm. Also, Gabe, while that happened, did you get a haircut? No, just happened to have the time to curl it this evening so that's oh, what that is it looks fantastic thank you and i have four successes which is also fantastic yeah you can't bullshit a bullshitter right and at this point the goblins are relenting from their insistence on this obviously made up parking fee however now you understand how things work in goblin town and the level of what is, what's the noun for scrupulous? Scruples, that's what it is. And the level of scruples that you will be encountering along the way. You've managed to solve this problem for like half a second before this same teeming goblin mass moves into the next scam, the next hustle. Now they're offering to guard the ship for you. Someone's gonna need to run the shop, right? We can we can sell your swingers for a, a cut of the profits. You can pay us that and, and you know, we'll, we'll take one and we'll sell the other five, right? enormous negotiating spiraling out of control and the longer this goes on the more goblins that arrive this place is teeming that they're coming out of doors they're coming out of windows they just kind of like appear from behind you that one was it in the ship already you're going to need help whether or not these goblins take it apart if you leave this thing unattended god only knows what's going to be here when you get back could be a circus right well I've. We do split up. <laughs> I will leave this up to you as a narrative decision. Uh, Snargle, you are of course the 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 one part of the crew people will trust the most. I you have experience in, in goblin dealings. You know how to speak the goblin can't. You could very feasibly arrange some kind of, of situation where, in exchange for a cut of the profits and you know not ruining your ship. Uh, you could have some guards with like a 85% chance that everything on the ship is still there when you get back. Hold up. Wait, can we <laughs> remember that box that you guys broke with like valuables in it <laughs> back in the <laughs> ship? We can offer them the broken box with like a few valuables in them. Uh, with your permission, Captain, I would like to try and uh, find the highest bidder in this situation. Um, whereas, uh, you know, uh, we will pay them a portion of the swingers. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, but I will find the best, the the most trustworthy, and whoever is going to take, like, the least amount of cut. However, without compromising those other two important factors. You're a goblin. You know goblins. I trust you on this. Yeah. Go get him, tiger. All right. <laughs> and I actually stand on this, like, I get this box out. I scooch it into the mass of goblins, stand upon it so that I'm taller, even elongate my body. So I'm towering over most of everyone here. 
and go full into auctioneer mode. Is like, anyone give me one swinger? Is there one swinger over here? Bring it. We got a two swinger, two swingers. And I am just bidding and trying to find a crew that will protect the owl mostly um, while we're in port. It takes some time, but that's not the kind of thing you have to roll for. Goblins, you've got it. In commercial nature, you're speaking their language. It's obvious by the the, the owl and the, and the demeanor of the crew that there's money to be made here. So we'll say that that resolves. But that means what I need from you is the name of the person who will lead the crew uh, that you are um, establishing this co-commercial venture with. Do we want to collab this name? Or, or is this just a me situation? I don't speak a goblin, but this is a collaborative storytelling exercise. So if someone wants to shout out suggestions, I'm here for it. Jerndal, obviously. <laughs> All my homies stand Jerndal. All my homies stand Jerndal. It's a callback to another game. I'm so sorry, <clears throat> but Jerndal's also a perfect name. So I think it's good. Okay. Uh, v, since it was your idea, why don't you describe Jerndal for me? Uh, Jerndal takes the form of, uh, small, sort of very, very long limbs. Uh, it, it, it's honestly, it's like Aaron in goblin form, uh, but shorter. So imagine Aaron's arms as they are, uh, but his torso much shorter, uh, and, and also his legs. So he has tiny muscular legs, long front arms with like clawed fingers, and then just really, really large ears that he's actually got, uh, like three or four earrings on each ear, which actually kind of like weigh them down. Uh, and so they kind of like droop a little bit and kind of like dangle just towards the ends, uh, almost akin to bat ears, but not quite. He's yeah, great. he didn't know that about uh goblin society in human society they have like drip and that's how stylish you are but in goblin society they have droop which is how much mm -hmm. your skin sags from the expensive wow. jewelry it's true yeah 100 percent. encounter a, a goblin um freelance rap artist and I want to translate that thought later well he seems polite all my homies stand journal Mm -hmm. Exclamation point journal in chat. It won't do anything, but it would make me happy. Well, uh, now we know it has to. Okay, by the time this episode arrives, we will make it do something. In the meantime, in between time, you have solved that problem. I know one of you, you might not know this yet, but one of you has the name of someone in this town who might be able to help you. Who possesses that secret? Who knows the maybe reclusive human uh, map maker who lives here or the retired goblin navigator or the imperial officer also on the run from the Capitol building? Perhaps the wizened sage who travels the universe. I've heard from Snargle on some NPCs. I've heard from V from some NPCs, which means I'm going to pitch this one to either Cyrus, Kale, or the good Lord Blackbird. I think Kale's got some <clears throat> potentially shady but helpful mates in uh, in the Hog Goodbye that can help out with getting parts for the ship. Well, slide on in character and uh, let us all know. Kind of been been watching the scene from the back and as this crowd has been gathering I'm keeping an eye out to see if anyone potentially has anything interesting in their pockets um don't think they do these are all just young goblins who are obviously trying to get a leg up on what we have so I'm a little bit bored but I'll put my hands in my own pockets and kind of lean into to Cyrus once I can see that Snuggle has this crowd under control and say um hey uh captain I've got a I got a mate in town, um, might be able to help with uh, getting some of the parts that we need. Uh, me and Snoggle doing that after burn move kind of fucked with the engine a little bit, and um, we're gonna need some parts. Uh, I know, I know a guy, is what I'm saying. Wait. Okay, because you got a, a mate here. Yeah. Right. Um... Well, uh, I'm not gonna ask uh, questions about that. Oh, no, um, really right. Well, you I, you know I have you lots of questions. you <laughs> can do you in your free time, which is quite limited since we're mostly on an airship yeah. away from cities. But uh, hey, if you want to get it on, then then you can get no, it no, on. Um, no, not like not no, no, like a friend. Not oh, like a friend. Oh, 
I think our definitions of mate were a bit yeah, different. Like a, Sorry. Like a very different. Very different. Yeah. Oh, hey, a buddy. Yeah. You can do whatever. I'm, I'm not judging. Oh, a, okay. a buddy with or without benefits? Well, clearly without. Otherwise, it would be a mate, right? But maybe the benefits are why we're here. So in that case, it would be a buddy with benefits. I mean, There's the only... benefits so that he gives me mechanical parts for the ship. That so see, so benefits. That, yeah. So a buddy with benefits. Yeah. 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 All right. Th thanks uh, for that clarification there, Naomi. Um, You're welcome. Right. Then we go see this buddy with benefits yeah. of yours. It's it's better than knowing no one in the city. And it seems like, uh, well, at least if you know them, maybe we can have less of a haggle. <laughs> I don't really know what his name is, but I'm sure we can figure it out. So you, you got a buddy here? Do you know where they are? No. Wait, hold, hold on. You have a buddy with benefits, mm -hmm. but you don't know their name. What kind of arrangement is that? Okay, well, first of all, don't judge. All right, I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> what people do anonymously with strangers for their own benefit is is no business of yours, and I will not have that behavior, which yeah. I have engaged in. Be shamed. Uh, kind of like <laughs> kind of moving, trying to find the right words, and I'll sort of look to 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 Cyrus and be like, we were in, the, we moved in the same circles that I moved in before I came to work for you, Captain. Um, and he's the type to change his name kind of often right and you know at this moment that they are in this city yeah yeah i heard a couple of the talk that like so the last name i heard him go by is ambrose i don't know if he's still going by ambrose but i heard people talk about him being in the hard goodbye and like making it big here or something and that was recent Right, so now you do know him, his name. We're making progress, Kale. Know, We're making I progress. The, I know the name he was using recently, but I, it's not... I don't know if he's still using it. Uh, well, people are talking about an Ambrose, so we yeah. might as well check that out. Yeah. On I mean, the top... Sorry, go a big head. Not a high bar, so... Well, I was just about to ask, on the topic of um, mating and making it big here, Cyrus, uh, this is a dangerous place. How close are you staying to Lord Blackbird? I mean, we're all staying close to each other, obviously. We're the group is not. Don't you eye roll, V? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that caught on camera? I'm so sorry. Yeah, you can do it a little bit more off camera. Thank you. Oh, that's, okay. That's very nice of you to offer. Okay. Yeah, all thanks. right. Great. Great. I'll I'll stop eye rolling so loudly. Right back to our lovely Lord Blackbird. Thank you. Um. We're not splitting up. Um, and I would like to imagine that the Cyrus would be walking next to him, but then as a kind of protective thing, but then Naomi would probably be doing the exact same thing on the other side. <laughs> uh, and uh, oh, yes. however, uh, Kale and Snargle want to walk in that position with the three of them side by side um, is totally fine with me. <laughs> I mean, I kind of assume that Snargle is as close to me as as, as Goblin-y possible. Uh, just because, you know, so, so if, if we were walking in a line, right, I assume it would go Snargle, then me, then uh, Lord Blackbird in the middle, then Cyrus, then Kale. And we're just like a so weird we all line. <laughs> just, just in a line. Are we, we slow plastics. walking? We just You're walk in a line. Yeah, we have a slow walk. <laughs> We have, like, everybody's gonna, as we're slow walking through, people are just gonna look at us and be like, what the fuck is happening? But we're just, like, slow walking. Uh, the wind is blowing. It's very cinematic. Oh, the camera... thoroughfare, it's a nightmare. Mm hmm uh, First of all, very inconsiderate for you to be taking up the entire sidewalk. Uh, oh, yeah, horribly. Mm hmm Bunch of Imperials coming into Goblin Town. But what like do we do for love? Place. Uh, I am not at all prepared to improvise improvise the answer to that question uh, 
for so many reasons. Uh, and I'll make the joke that the, the only thing I wanted in that was to make the joke about mating and making things big. And then it turned into an actual cinematic experience, which is wonderful. Because mm -hmm. uh, now I'm imagining the camera slow panning across just above the, the, the teeming bunch of heads of a bunch of goblins. And then like you get that uh, depth of field effect, like the sun, like... Um, J.J. Abrams glare coming down across the the five of you as you. You gotta have a lens flare. I don't necessarily believe that, but AAA gaming and uh, modern cinema disagree with me. <laughs> I mean, the new thing is God rays. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta get the good crepuscular rays going. Oh, that's a nice word. Crepuscular, great word. Love that mm -hmm. word. One you of my it, favorites. Like this, this would be a really amazing cinematic scene. You know, like with the like little green bag style playing in the background. However, um, Nathaniel's very aware that we're taking up the entire sidewalk here, and um, it doesn't feel great about it. So it's interrupted every now and again by me going, oh, I'm terribly sorry, so sorry, and helping a tiny goblin get past my legs. I thought you were going to say that uh, every so often Nathaniel goes back or, like, <laughs> breaks the line so that Naomi and Cyrus are next to each other for a moment before he comes back in. <laughs> He is, no, I, he's, I'm, he's polite, not suicidal. <laughs> I'm I'm terrified of leaving you two any with, with any unencumbered space between you at this precise moment. Yeah, we're not yeah, that's that. um, for the best, I think. I, I think um I think as a noble, uh, one of your class abilities is to issue a fake apology as a free action. So yeah, that makes sense. What's even worse <laughs> is that they're completely genuine. I'm a very bad noble. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I know that we're going somewhere, but the question is where, uh, Kale, or maybe Snarl can help on here. You are in Goblin Town. You need information about the location of maybe Ambrose, maybe somebody else. Where do you start chasing down those rumors? Um, I think Kale's instinct is to go to somewhere that people of his, um, let's say, uh, former employment status might go and uh, gather. So I would ask Snuggle kind of um, maybe while uh, Cyrus and Naomi and Nathaniel are otherwise distracted, just kind of uh, make the way round the back of the line uh, and like lean down to Snuggle and be like, um, hey, uh, so... Uh, you you wouldn't know about like um where like the 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 darker side of this city is right oh you mean the criminal underbelly and i say that loudly <laughs> with no no recourse right like i'm not afraid of saying that i mean i mean like i wouldn't your words not mine but yeah sure oh yeah um there's a couple places like that i can think of off the top of my head it's a whole other industry uh, there's games where we play about whether or not we can get ripped off by one another, and some people just really excel at it. So I can uh, take you to those places, but, you know, make sure nothing gets pulled out of your pocket while yeah. we're there. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty set on that. Um, and you kind of look down and, uh, uh, like, most of um, Kale's pockets are, like, they have nothing in them. They're just like there to put his hands in, so he looks cool. Kale very rarely carries actually like actually carries things on them, or if he does, they're all in concealed pockets. His at like pockets where his pockets should be are not th like things to keep things in. Ooh, um, distraction pockets. Love it. I'm a fucking thief, baby. I have distraction <laughs> pockets. Um, very clever. I'm, I'm sitting over here like, oh, my pants have no pockets, and you've got distraction pockets. Distraction pockets. This is the patriarchy. I just, I'm so mm -hmm. not. Oh, I'm so jealous. Turns out that uh, this entire adventure is just is a dark retelling of of, of patriarchy in, in yeah. American society. Um, Hate it. Yeah. So uh, that, that yeah, that'd be great, Snuggle. If you were, if we lead, you lead the way, and I'll um, you know, pass on the uh, the advice to the the uninitiated. I yeah. suppose. That's what I was going to address. Do, are we sure we want everyone to go? Because um, the, the, these these goblins are really good at what they do. Yeah. I know I don't get a vote, but I absolutely want all of you to go. <laughs> I mean, we could ask as a group. Like, I know Captain doesn't really want to split. And... Well, here's the here's I think the central question, Naomi. You you are more than willing to 
to fight your way out of any bad situation. Cyrus, you might not have been in this particular bad side of town, but you have experienced them. Snargle, these are your people. You know their games. There's really only one delicate, insulated flower among you whose uh, dry, powdered um, morality might lead to some kind of utter scandal. Uh, were he or she to be exposed, that kind of thing. And I don't want to mention any Lord Blackbird names, but... <laughs> Complete anonymity. Yeah. That's no, I, the... no idea what you mean. None. None at all. No. Uh, so for not going to split the party, I would like one of you to take on the responsibility of explaining to Lord Blackbird what you might encounter here, preparing him for the sights. Kind of like... Uh, the going down the line and like leaning in and telling people where we're going and get to to Lord Blackbird and just be like yeah so um we're gonna go and try and find my my friend um he doesn't really hang out in like the nice parts of town just so you know um I'm gonna be like blunt with you here have you ever been to like a a, a criminal underground like any criminal underground I, I mean, I've hung out with people taking law classes. That's the same, pretty much, right? Oh, you know, same energy. They're, they're same energy. Yeah. Um, right. I, what, I mean, no. It, no, I can't. Listen, I don't. I am just going to. I'm just not going to. It's. Am I? Do I need to go? Should I go back to the ship? Am no, I? No, no, no. I'm just gonna... saying. Are you? Are you going to be all right? I don't. Captain, I... Captain doesn't want us to split. So. Well, I I don't know. Um, but hey, I I mean, strangers just just friends you haven't met yet. So I, I'm sure we'll be fine. Ooh. I'll just just Ooh. just yeah. I just I lean nice. in it's as fine. I as I hear all this going on, and I'm like, um. Hmm. Mr. Hart, kind of like sending eyes to everybody in the group, like, don't forget this is Tristan now while we're here. Don't you, like, aren't you a master of disguise? Isn't that like a thing that you do? I suppose. I, could, I mean, I haven't trod the boards in a while. I could give it a shot. I mean, I just, I just think it would be great if you just looked like somebody who belonged in a place like this instead of well, I'm to I'm totally here for this, but as a flashback, because we're not going to the thing where oh, we remember and we go back and everyone's seen Tristan now. So, let's uh, flashback to five or six minutes before the ship docks, while Snargles, you know, just dipping through the low overhanging bridges and dodging goblin traffic. And there's that one um, barge with a restaurant on it. In like every movie where there's something flying, there's always the the like restaurant barge. Fly the fifth element I'm thinking of is this connecting. Am I an idiot? Okay. No, I got you. No, no, no. No, no it, it makes total sense. sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Aziz, I will send you an image uh, uh, at some point, Syrinx. But um, they just as serve all bug jam sandwiches. <clears throat> as that's happening, um, <laughs> Lord Blackbird, Master of Disguise. Um, two questions. One, uh, <sighs> what is your image of what you should look like? Like when you come out of the out of the of the, the the crew quarters dressed for criminality what does that outfit look like and then second question which actual criminal on the ship who is not currently flying corrects you and just like unfucks that whole mess i'm very worried about everything that uh kale just did with his body just then <laughs> um so you see here's the thing um, disguise is, I mean, it's such a relative term, isn't it, really? You know, it's its just, it's its like lying with your body. It's a whole thing. Um, so I'm not the greatest liar, but, but I've lived around liars my entire life. Therefore, I should have learned something. This should be easy. I go into my room and I, I'm, I'm looking around and I've got this sort of long, beautiful robe and it's got these sort of filigree bits on it. And I'm like, no, no, it's the gold. That's rubbish. I throw it over my shoulder. And I go over there and I'm like, okay, I've got some breeches here. They have no decoration. They're satin, but they have no decoration. It's fine. Those will do. Great. Cool. 
Love that for me. Um, criminals wear shirts. I don't know if criminals wear shirts. Kale wasn't wearing a shirt the other day. Therefore, I think maybe not wearing a shirt is the best bet. I'm not going to wear a shirt, so I don't wear a shirt. And I get like one of the scarves, like a like a long scarf from the side, just sort of go, what if I get cold? You know, like criminals get cold. Criminals get cold. My father got cold all the time. He's a raging criminal. And I like, drape it around myself and I go, no, I need a hood. <sighs> okay. Uh, and I just pick up like a jacket that has a hood and just put the hood on. Um, and I go over to the mirror. Wait, wait, you, wait, like the hood's up, but your arms the, aren't in the sleeve. No, it's the just coat is up. like a yes. It's like a cape, but shit. Um, so I go over to the mirror and I look at it. There's just a moment when I just reconsider all of my life choices and have to square with the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing. And I open the door and lean out and just go, "Help." <laughs> Uh, scale from one to ten, Kale Cyrus. How raucous is your laughter as you lay your eyes upon the works of the Grain Lord Blackbird? Look, look, he's not wearing a shirt, right? No. Point taken. Not at all. <laughs> so, uh, there will be initial laughter, but then it will die down. It will be like, <clears throat> <clears throat> right, right. Um, I think he could. Uh, <clears throat> tragic isn't it sorry something in my throat um uh i think you could uh use some assistance maybe yeah. i'll go find the spaceship <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> and i i take off the scarf of the hood and just throw it on the floor dramatically no no, no. criminals get cold you should on. keep that criminals get cold, get cold. right okay criminals I, pick... do get cold. <laughs> I pick it up and i'm like which one's better just take both just both okay. you wouldn't want to get cold right. you know I will just hold on to these until Kale gets back. I'll go find him one of my my spare shirts and I'll hand it over. It's probably far too long on you because Kale is like really tall and lanky. Yeah. But it's something. You get yeah. that cool like bunched up sleeve effect though, because like it's like a long, like a flowy sort of like a billowy shirt. And then you have like the sleeves, and as he like pulls them up to to have them cuffed around his sleeves, there's just like the gathered fabric, and it just looks very piratey. Yeah, the, uh, and the the hood works. It, um, the hood works. You, yeah, the hood works. Uh, you come with me a second, and I'll put my arm around your shoulder, and I'm okay. gonna like lean you to, lead you down off the ship, kind of onto the uh, onto the street. I'm when you're sorry. leaving, Kale, uh, I think the last thing you hear from the hallway is like, the shirt isn't that necessary. <laughs> <laughs> and you like put my arm around your shoulder and like kind of guiding you down. It's like, so you see like the thing about Ooh. criminals. Mm -hmm. And just to assure you that I'm I'm not I'm not a criminal. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm like I look I'm looking over your shoulder. Like, nervously around. looking for Naomi. It's like, we, we, we have you, you, you're looking the part, you're almost there, I swear. And I'm just kind of walking you down. The shirt. Oh, There's wait. just one little thing that you're not missing. And as soon as we're on the street, I'm going to shove you really hard and you fall over in a puddle. <sighs> <sighs> was that really, was that necessary? That. Oh, absolutely. Seriously, I just. It's my shirt. Like. It's my body. What are you. Touche. <laughs> you don't want to get killed, right? Preferably not, but also, I like to not be cold and damp all the time. Cold I don't know if that's what you do in your spare time, Kale. Look, Some of us like to be dry. Look, cold and damp, dead. I don't know. I've not decided which one I like worse yet. And I get up and sort of attempt to brush myself off, and I'm like... Hey, you won't be cold. You have two scars. I do have two scars, but both of them are damp, Cyrus. Honestly. Oh my God. Well, you owe me some new Pashmere and I walk off. <laughs> Where are you walking off to? I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm leaving the scene, Cyrus. Let me <laughs> in, let in me a live. huff. I am. Yeah. Well, so that that's the energy of I'm leaving, and then Cyrus, uh, as the rest of you are walking down from where are you going? And you're like, I don't. And then, then the goblins start to show up, and the yeah. whole negotiation scene happens. So we end that flashback, and we come back to the moment now where the disguise check applies. 
great. So I'm going to let our good Lord Blackbird stack up some dice. Uh, one small change that I'd like to make about our direction is that this is Goblin Town. It is ever shifting. So as you are proceeding, kind of following the ebb and the flow of the place, Kale knows a little bit about where you're going. Snargle, you can kind of read the signs. And then literally out of nowhere in, if, if fonts could have a mocking tone, this is what it would be. It actually says criminal above ground in an arch over the street. And then there's like uh, stolen signs. Um, if you uh, like imagine um, someone had gone through like a, a, a school or a public park and taken down all of like the no skateboarding signs, the equivalent of that from all over the empire and little bits of stolen this and that just hanging from it, making a, a, an egregious mockery of the rule of law. The attitude in this play in this town has already has already kind of struck you as as, as slapdash and, and raucous, but there's a palpable change in, in the level of 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 um of moral floor as you cross this threshold. Even peering across it, you can kind of be like, "Well, uh, we went from like one rowdy drunk goblin per capita to 35," and the smell of strange spices, curious herbs, the the, the noise of, of drunken revelry. There are shadier figures. And I mean, like your costume's pretty good, uh, Nathaniel, but like that guy, he is nailing the criminal look. <clears throat> All it's of the lack this... of shirt. Uh, it's the lack of shirt. Have you seen you're... that guy's tattoos? They're when, insane. When you're right, you're right. Well, I'm not, um, not going to commit that far. Well, not now, Kale, because I mean, as you I have said, still take off I'm your cold. Shirt. I might, because again, it is damp. I have not forgotten. As you, yes, from the conversation I was about, I was going to say the, the, the vices uh, that you have access to um, in this place are many. Um, and you bringing up the shirt raises one of them as a, a goblin. Um, we've established canonically that, that goblins are non-binary kind of by whether it's inability of, of I don't, is it biology? Do they not care? I don't care. Goblin gender is a big blurry continuum that everyone's happy with. We lack commitment. <clears throat> so <laughs> this, uh, so a goblin approaches you as you're having this conversation about the shirt and it's, it's a creepy thing when like the goblin, you would imagine someone accosting you for a service would like reach out and put their hands on your shoulder. But in this case, they don't actually move. The arm just grows longer and the fingers grow longer. And this like three foot long arm taps you on the shoulder and goes, I can help you take that off if you want. Right, I don't think that is necessary, uh, kind goblin. Um, you can take that hand back, stretch it back, please, yeah. Just uh, reeling in like um uh like a seatbelt when you pull it and just let it snap back into place, you'll be back and just like sashaying off. I don't think he will, but thanks for your services. Nice to meet you. No, no, no. You don't say criminals. Don't say nice to meet you. Oh, uh, lesson number one. Um, what did you say? Do you say bye aggressively? Or? Um, it was okay to meet you. Or right. Just or just don't say anything. You can get. You can do like the nod of the head. You can do like the head nod, like the. No, just just with your head, not your not your full body. Just like the just move the chin. Like, I'll just go with. I was indifferent to our meeting. <laughs> yeah. Right. That'll do it. Putting mm -hmm. that in the my Lord Blackbird quote book. I'm gonna ask John Harper if I can license this to get a. Uh, Lord Blackbird speak and say doll. And when you pull the string, one of the times it just goes, I was indifferent to our meeting. God, that bring Nathaniel's God. such a good criminal. Best. So good at this. this I am amazed. Uh, mm -hmm. That brings us to the result of your dice check. How'd you do, bud? Got three. A three. Solid Sorry. three. Perfectly acceptable. That is the default uh, for a disguise. So your average common passerby goblin, your petty criminal, mm, gonna fail uh, to recognize you. If you encounter someone perhaps a bit more astute or someone who has reason to recognize you, uh, they're going to see through that. Oh, so. yeah, no. 
<laughs> no, don't be silly. No, that's that's fine. This is fine. <laughs> In time, uh, you will sort through this place again, being accosted at every turn by people selling anything and everything. At various points, uh, tripped over, tripping over, people passed out on the ground at the, the scene of a, a door bursting open and a whole bunch of d- drunk goblins kind of skittering through you. Uh, at one point, uh, you're looking down an alleyway and a card game has obviously gone wrong and one of the goblins like slinks out. Uh, and then Naomi, you being the largest, uh, hiding behind you, shifting into goblin shape the way that Snargle did just so they can't be seen, adjusting their body to just like automaton behind you until they're past before skittering off again into the distance. You will arrive at the central marketplace arranged around, um, calling it a bar is a little pretentious because it's more like a bunch of people who have just congregated in the same area to sell uh, alcohol and other um, things you might imbibe to alter your consciousness. What is the name of this place? Somebody volunteer me a name. The cold shoulder. The cold shoulder. I like that. Mm-hmm. Of course, not the kind of thing that would have a sign on it because if you're here, everyone knows what that is. The only reason you might learn that name, Lord Blackbird, is because as you come in, there's a hawker, both arms out, with fingers wrapped around six or seven pints. Come get the coldest shoulder, coldest shoulder in the criminal above ground. Uh, waving them around in a uh, in a it calls to mind Shiva with the multi arms and the and the twirling. Now, Kale, you can scan this crowd quite quite quickly. You do not see the person that you know as Ambrose, mm-hmm. but if there is information to be found about their whereabouts, there is no finer place than here to uncover it. Um, I will kind of nod to to Cyrus and walk up to the bar in a gesture to buy a drink um and as the the bartender kind of comes over I'll I'll buy something you know not not crazy uh just a fairly normal drink and just say uh I'm uh I'm looking for someone I always find that at bars bartenders always see see a lot wondering if you can help me i will answer that question for you just in a moment but before that i have um a question i will ask in return there are three beverages that are scrawled upon this chalkboard menu thing do you order the pint of fresh piss easy squeezins or re-retch i think i order easy squeezins Easy squeezins, classic. Uh, there's a, a cart, we'll say, right? Some kind of, of apparatus by which you could load on your things and take them away, travel to get out of the above ground at night. Uh, you order an easy squeezins. The goblin uh, goes to the back of the cart. There's a really thick drape, uh, reaches in, and and I don't know that I could identify the sound of a cow being milked, like just generally. Um, but it's that that rhythmic, um, like the squeeze in the bucket and the squeeze in the bucket. Um, that sound, except whatever is making the noise, is certainly not a cow. Got it. And just leave that vividly to your imagination as he returns with um, like a... Oh, I'd prefer if you didn't leave it to our imagination. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> well, one of the things about um, I'm an eldritch horror is the terrifying nature of the unknown. He returns to you with um, a a frothy pinkish orange. I want to say it has like a a, a Pepto-Bismol, like the pink stomach medicine kind of consistency to it. Um, Little granules of, uh, we call them flavor crystals, uh, floating in it. And weirdly, all of that's that's horrifying in its own way. But the thing that's probably going to drive you crazy is that it's cold. Like it's frosty. Like whatever this thing, it came out frosty. Mm -hmm. Goblin slides it over to you. Then you ask your question. I do. And your goblin friend says, Yeah? Well, I'll tell you anything you want for a price. Oh, of course. My apologies. And I'll push over the money for the drink plus a little extra, um, but not take my hand off it. Like, keep my fingers on the money. Um, 
looking for a human man known to some by the name of Ambrose. Shorter than me, dark skin, bald. Well, I see plenty of types like that around here, he says, obviously lying. Mm -hmm. Looks down, counting your coins. Is that all it's worth to you, stranger? Funny callback. What are you buying? I come, uh, it's... (laughs) I come up from behind. I'm so sorry. You totally derailed me when you do the voice. I come up from behind hearing this kind of go on and I just pull out one of Snargle's bug jam sandwiches and I just slide it across and give a little like, huh? Huh? Ooh, I'll buy it at a high price. (laughs) I'm just becoming a Resident Evil 4 merchant soundboard. I apologize for that. But we all know it's established. Snargle made a cannon. Bug Jam Sandwich is like dropping a fucking Benjamin on the bar, right? And you can just see the eyes, the greedy, hungry eyes, and he's reaching out for it. When his criminal instinct kicks in and says, oh, well, it's got to be cut worth that. I mean, information like that, as hard as you want it. Uh, Two Bug Sandwiches. You drive a, a hard two, bargain. Two sandwiches. Got a problem with that? Not you either. know, the uh, the jam is Rosie's. It's Rosie's brand. You know how good that is. Oh, you just see whatever whatever facade of criminality was on this goblin's face just melts. Is he just like Rosie's? And I only make the best. Just. He snatches it, clutching it to his chest, uh, to their chest, as uh, as you might a child. Like you, I'm I'm gonna go off on a limb and say some of you on this crew have never seen someone love something so much as this goblin loves this sandwich. There'll be a brief, brief moment where this uh, goblin bartender recomposes themselves before returning to Kale's attention and says, uh, "Yeah, I know your friend." But uh, he doesn't make public appearances. I can put you in touch. You uh, you know your way around the goodbye? I know someone who does. All right. Uh, random improv questions. Someone give me a landmark. What is something you would find in anywhere of any kind um, on the hard goodbye? It's a fountain. Okay, I got it. It's a fountain. Wait. Uh, Oh, let's next detail from somebody else. We're gonna we're gonna tiger team this. So it's a fountain. I would like also. I would like for the liquid to be soda. It's a soda. It's a fountain that shoots soda. Um, what like a statue? What's the decoration? Yeah, I was gonna say a statue, definitely. Okay, and then Kayla, uh, Nathaniel, uh, who is the statue of? Um, it is a statue of a big whale wearing a crown. Right. And then, like, there's 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 moss that's grown around the base of it, and on the top of the crown, in that that kind of plush, kind of um, royal jewels kind of way. Except the moss is really just sort of really spongy candy that's grown really really old, and it's kind of it's growing things, but you're not sure what it is. All we know is that it's neon green. Well, that's that's the uh, that's how it happened. There's a tradition that um, you know, like you have a gobstopper or some gum you're done with, you would stick it on the statue and like mockery of the gems, and now it's gone to grow into this big mossy like thing around the top of the whale. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for that collaborative exercise. So the bartender says, "You've made it with my while, and I can get you a I can get you a meeting with him. You know, um, find." I am not thinking fast enough to come up with like a a quest hint for like take 10 paces past the dead man's face until you see the green crown. No, it's not happening. He communicates to you uh, just after dark, not a minute before, not a minute after, meet at this (laughs) candy crowned whale statue barfing soda. (laughs) And I will see that your man makes it. Thank you for your help, sir. And I'm gonna kind of like pat him on, on like the the side. And as I do so, I want to slip my hand into his pocket and take back the coins that I gave him. 
Ooh, that's uh, pilfering. Yes, uh, make for me some kind of thievery check. I can do that. I have lots of dice in that. <laughs> I think, yeah, you are you're stacked in, in larceny. Three, four, five, uh, six. For, for my point, I will let him have the bug jam sandwich. Just, I'm, I, I do not intend to take that back. I'm going to say if Kale gets a high enough number of successes, not only can Kale steal the sandwich and the coins, but he they can uh, put the uh, sandwich in your pocket without you knowing. No. Uh, no. It's not a, the, dice, the dice will tell us the tension is killing me. Oh. I only took two from my pool. I have I mean, that many in theft. You know six, what you should do. Yeah, I, I think, and I think because you, you got six successes, it is only appropriate that you, like, Ocean's Eleven this for me, like, narrate in the smug thieves can't how you accomplish this. Yeah, I think, like, I, what I do is, like, I put one hand on kind of, like, his, on, like, kind of his back and his side to, like, tap him, like, pat him and then shake his hand. And as I'm like shaking his hand, the other one goes back into his pocket and I'll take the coins out. Um, I won't take the bug jam sandwich because he seemed so happy for it. And, you know, I know how much we have. We have a lot of bug jam sandwiches, but I like my money and I like shiny things and I'm taking my money back. Um, but it's very quiet. It's very quick. And they just they don't even stay in, in the palm of my hand. They just slide up my sleeve so that when I pull back, it's it's like nothing even happened. I, they say there's no honor among thieves, and let it never be known. Let no one say, neither on this cast nor viewer, that Kale Arkham doesn't have a heart. I mean, eh, eh. some have said that. And <laughs> I deny them. He may not have a heart, or he may have a heart, but he definitely has friends with benefits. <laughs> Certainly doesn't have the heart um, to not throw well-dressed people in the mud, so... <laughs> All I'm Buddies. saying is character development is needed. Well, maybe you should get nicer clothes then and respect them more. You were going to say me? Oh, I was just going to say it's buddies with benefits. Don't don't get it mm, twisted. It's mm-hmm. buddy with benefits. Mm. Th- the benefits. Not a mate. Yeah. Yeah. No. And you say friends with benefits. That connotes one kind of relationship. Exactly. Buds with benefits, very different. That's not a mistake you want to make in company That's that you a don't like, you know, super well. and, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, then, mm-hmm. and if you if you won't mind, I know you were you were sitting on it, Aaron. I think you will find it's buddies who juggle. Jurgling. Bud juggling. No. Um, because of my Uncle Joe. Who is that's short for juggle. Thank you, you for that. Jungle I will jungles? write that down. Jungle. Look, v, v, look, look, look. There are, there are two kinds of men in this world, V. There are those, those who jurgle and those who lie and say they don't. <laughs> oh, I don't like to think about jurgle jurgling. Real people jurgle. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Real, real, hashtag real goblins jurgle. <laughs> Daniel is dead. I've broken Gabe. <laughs> just totally uh, lost them. Uh, all right. Well, we are coming up about on our break time, and it is obvious that Gabe needs some time to recover. We're going to take a quick 10, 15 minute, 10 minute. Okay, how about this? 10. Uh, we'll say it's a five minute break. Please be back in 10 minutes for our five minute break. Uh, and we will be back soon enough to find out what happens in the time between our nice little bartender exchange and a long awaited meeting between Kale and Ambrose. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
this one, isn't it? When we shared this story, we invite others to understand who we are in the universal grammar of the human soul. You're listening to the All Night Society, an actual play podcast by Queen's Court Games. At their best, my younger days were spent excelling in everything. And at their worst, I spent a lot of time suffocating under the weight of inferiority. It takes a special kind of person to read between the lines of code and instantly perceive what those random strings of letters and numbers actually mean. Look, I wanted to be a cop as long as I can remember. I wanted to be the one kicking down doors and yelling, everyone, hands in the air. I cannot imagine an eternity squandered on so vain an effort. We are not immaculate. Our humanity lives within our flaws. I don't remember dying, but I do remember undying. That feeling of being pulled back from the empty void. How it takes you a few seconds to realize that you're not breathing. Alfred is committing quite the sin, wasting your talents like this, she'd offer. This was the most seen I'd felt in... Ever. This was monstrous. I was the monster. And were it not for the beast's intense fear of the sun, I might have simply waited for it to rise and claim me. This wasn't graduate school anymore. This was war. Suffice it to say, that necessitated a change in curriculum. I remember her sighing and saying, you're in trouble, Scarlet, and I just laughed and said, no shit. Was he murdering his betrayer? Was his betrayer murdering him? I couldn't say, but I knew better than to walk in after him. I'm making eye contact with him and his, his fear rattled my core. Put simply, Sheriff, you're in Chicago to deal with the kindred monsters. I'm here to deal with the other kind. They are the angels, brought and held together as children by their status as outcasts and freaks. Imaginative and tormented, Thomas has suffered greatly under the care of his foster family. How far would you go for release, for salvation? Goth culture was the perfect escape for young, rebellious Gabrielle. Now she's traded her innocence for alcohol, tattoos, and an abusive ex. Michael couldn't fight his way out of that basement, and he's been doubling down on violence ever since. When being strong isn't enough, where else do you go? Teenage Tarla leaned hard into the outcast persona, using her hair as a mood ring. Now she's buried trauma, and with it, the capacity to love and trust. Ralph wasn't always a conspiracy-obsessed, deep-web denizen. What happened that turned a fantasy-loving book nerd into something much, much worse? Will these bonds hold true when they're reunited for sinister purpose in adulthood? 
Find out in His Last Hope, a story of lost friendships and childhood traumas for cult divinity lost. Welcome back. Hey, you know what? I uh, I personally, and I think speaking on behalf of all of us, we're really happy you decided to stick with us. I hope you enjoyed the art. I hope you got hydrated. I um, hope you did a little bit of stretching. Be sure to avoid uh, just, just sitting still a long time, deep vein thrombosis. I don't, I don't want to be responsible for any of that. But I am back with Snoggle and Cyrus and Naomi and Nathaniel and Kale Arkham, and we are going to solve some more problems on the owl. Now, your goblin bartender friend told you that they would arrange a meeting with Ambrose just after dark. I'm not a uh, sundialologist, but I'm sure some of you are, and you have maybe three or four hours uh, before that time arrives. It has taken you a couple hours to navigate to the criminal above ground, uh, sort out that piece of it. Snargle, you know for a fact that um, A, given the... Uh, incredible commercial prowess of the goblins as uh, as people. Two, you didn't have a huge inventory of um, squid-related uh, produce. Uh, and three, if you are not there right when the shop closed, there's no way you're getting that money back. So there'll be some sense of urgency as you return to the, uh, to the owl, um, hopefully to find it still in one piece, not on blocks. Now, your negotiation role went very, very well. Naomi, you were intimidating. Cyrus, you were intimidating. Nathaniel, you were just adorable. So they're not inclined to just majorly screw you over. Um, you will receive between you know, 90 and 100% of the value of, of, of the squid fingers, minus the ones um, that you traded off in exchange for these folks providing that service. <clears throat> so... We're halfway to solving one problem, I think, because uh, as I recall, it was your intention to use the proceeds from the, I was going to say squid squail sale, but that just sounds like I'm stuttering. Squail. To use the proceeds from um, Squamers, uh, oh, to, Squamers to purchase uh, fuel for the owl. Now, th there's no, like, you, you can't go to the, the, I don't know, what's the regional gas station thing? Um I can't use the ones in Nebraska because it, it sounds horrible and offensive. Gas, gas goblins? Well, it, G, G3, one, obviously. G3, yeah. right. There's no G3. Um, so you have to kind of negotiate ad hoc with people. Maybe a pirate has uh, brought in a tanker that went rushing. Maybe there's someone who was on journey here, has some left over. Tell me, how do you find the fuel you need uh, to... Uh, keep the ship a-rolling later on to the remnants. Well, maybe our Vera's buddy Jurndal um, could help us with that because he seems like the kind of goblin to have his fingers in the, every little pot or every little airship around here. So maybe he uh, he met someone who uh, didn't want to buy a parking permit and, uh, and actually took the ship apart. Um, so maybe Jurndal wants to help. I'm sure Jundal will be more than happy to point you in that direction for a modest honorarium. Say, maybe 5.72% uh, uh, of proceeds from the Squinger Squamers. 
I think that's a bit much. This I is, think Jerndal is under like overestimating him right now. This is just him pointing us in the right direction and not actually buying the fuel as well. Ooh. Okay, fine, fine, fine. I'll meet. I'll meet you halfway. How about um five point seven one? So and and which way will you point us then? Oh, I, I know a guy. I I I know just who you talk to. Uh, Fuel King, Fuel Lord. Uh, do you want fuel on uh, in, in right. the Right, and yeah. if it's a Fuel King or Lord, then thank you for that information. We can find someone else who wants to point us in the direction cheaper. Oh, yeah, but you're not going to If he's it. so I mean, famous. He's a very, very busy man. Fuel's in super high demand here, so you, if you walk with an appointment, you're going to have to wait in line, you're going to have to queue. And I mean, like, uh, some people are into that, but I'm really not. If you, I mean, these people are kind of people who are in a hurry. So, uh, no, it would be really, really nice if you had someone who could give you the in, right? Give you an invite, let you get straight to the front of the line. Well, we actually have a guy here who uh, is in the inn, and I kind of pat Snargle, and I'm like, yeah, we'll do this, we'll do this. Um, He's actually also in the end, so I think you'll have to offer better things. Buddy journal. I mean, okay. you've already helped um, us with sales. This is a beneficial thing for both of us, is it not? Well, okay, Come on, gonna... journal. What do you say? Mm, lowest I can go is 5.70%. I think you could go for 5.03%. I think you can, Jurdle. I know you. I all right, all right, all right, all right. Tell you what, I'll dribble, I'll dribble you for it. Yo, yo, what? I'll dribble you for it. Oh, Captain, I don't know if you want to. Wait, listen, listen, listen. I know, Jurdle. Hey, no, no, struggle. I got this. Don't worry about it. Look, look, Jurdle, you're a nice guy. Really, we did some great commerce there. There's some really good kinship here, but I think I, I think I don't need your jurgle services. Um, I oh, think no, you no, can no, just no, no, stick no, no, with no, no, five services. Oh, free. Um, no. yeah, but no, you don't. You don't need to explain yourself. You know, it's <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> um, it's afraid you think you think you can't out jurgle jurgle. <laughs> you think you can't out jurgle jurgle. I. <laughs> I, I would never claim such a thing. I'm I'm not interested in, in juggling with you, you know, or or, or uh, next to you or whatever in your vicinity. I'm not interested in juggling right now, Jurndal. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, big famous guy cops and afraid of a jurgle off. I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not I'm not famous. It's fine. Um, it, it, I think we could. Hey everybody, look at little Miss Afraid to Jurgle over here. I think is he smaller than me? Oh, so like like a third your size. I think I take his like the front of his shirt, and I'm like, "Don't you ever dare to threaten me with a jurgle off again." You hear that, Jurndal? We were buddies before. Oh, you're crossing the line. <laughs> just like legs, like in the air. Just let's see how you can still jurgle when you're down there. All right. Oh yeah, uh, totally fine. All right. Uh, just, you know, just joke, you know. Everyone likes juggling stuff. It's a funny, it's a funny thing that we do. So, uh, could you... does it look like I'm amused by your juggling? No, you know what? That was my mistake. You know, I, I learned, I learned, I figured it out. Sorry, I uh, you know, I just didn't uh, appraisal. Not my strong suit. I'm, I'm more of a salesman. Right, five percent, and I leave you alive for the moment. On the ground? Yeah, on the ground. No juggling. Okay, two percent, two percent. Hey you! Two percent or my buddy here will throw you off. You don't you just need to negotiate with me. Yeah, two two percent sounds fair. It's great. Does it sound fair in turtle? You can see uh, goblin legs like you're trying to stretch them down so that they can reach the floor, but like hey, doing it really <laughs> I, I think I think I'll point to Naomi so that she can like swoop the legs up. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually you will bully this um this this poor entrepreneur this honest business goblin honest business goblin uh, into, Oil entrepreneur. nice yes. uh into uh pointing you in the right direction for what it's worth uh Drindle was uh being honest in their ability to get you um an appropriate audience i'm going to tell you this in advance so you have time to think of it Drindle gives you a code phrase a wink and a nod that you have to give when you arrive at the lair of the Fuel King. So simmer on that for a bit. 
as we proceed forward. The next question, I know what the criminal above ground is. If you were the Goblin Fuel King, um, thinking like a Jabba the Hutt kind of goblin, just like the fattest, uh, like who runs Barter Town goblin that you can think of, where in the hard goodbye would you expect to find this person? Uh, in his own personal mansion, or their own personal mansion. Uh, naturally. Um, perhaps, given the way they have pipes and things and all the different docks, I'm guessing towards like the center, like the beating heart of of the hard goodbye. Yeah, um, I'm thinking maybe it's like, it's it's almost the, the, the epicenter of all of this and every street sort of branches out from there. So if you're looking at it from an aerial view, it very much looks like almost an open rib cage with these sort of um, spindly streets spiraling outwards. And then this mansion, just the biggest structure, obnoxiously big in the middle of the city. It's mm -hmm. really fucking ugly though. It's like a big brutalist block of concrete. Oh, for sure, yeah. But it also has a swimming pool with pool floaties. Mm. And strangely enough, wherever there is supposed to be water, there are soda and yep. candy. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so you can't actually is, swim in the swimming pool. Pool, pool floaties mm, are no. just more moss. Yeah, not with that attitude. But now that you've said that, like I have to be contrarian. So I hope you're all ready to go for a soda swim. Wow. Well, our. Uh, intrepid crew and passengers and guests proceed downward. Uh, it doesn't really feel fair to say downward because there's there's down, but then there's some up, and then there's a lot of left and over, but then there's also some down, and then some up again. Uh, at one point, there's a rope bridge. Sometimes it's stairs. There are a couple places you have to hop over. There's that one really fun part where it's just a zip line, <clears throat> and like there's nothing to there's no um anything to like grab onto. So you have to bring your own scarf. Good on you for coming prepared, Lord Blackbird, or some other mechanism by which to descend and eventually navigating this place that is a combination between hideously dangerous industrial environment and childhood dream playground. You arrive at the center of the hard goodbye. As established, the place from afar looks like a big spread open rib cage, so we're, we're square in the sternum, right in, in the cockles of it. Uh, originally probably constructed as some kind of outpost by the Imperials or a, a commercial company of some kind, but mining interests or whatever having dried up, it was soon taken over by goblins. That explains why it is a, a, a very fortress-like bland industrial structure. But as the beating heart of the former uh, colony or outpost, it's also where they kept the fuel reserves. So strapped on either side of this thing are gigantic tanks, like, the tanks on the side of a space shuttle, just in all kinds of different sizes and rigged together with obviously unsafe plumbing that rockets out into all directions where ships of all kinds can sell their fuel, buy the fuel. It's all rigged together by an incredible series of pumps and valves. And indoors, you will find the Fuel King. Now, I asked you a little bit ago, there is a special phrase you don't have to use on the Goblin Guards. So... Who is going to be the first person up to the gate? And what do you say to get an audience? I have, I have an idea for a passphrase, but I don't think it's no. Nathaniel who, be the, wanna, who should be no. the one who yes, says yes. it. Yes, yes, I think it's a good base. I, I think we can work yeah. on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it. I think it's perfect, no notes. I feel like it has to be either Snoggle, Kale, or Cyrus, you say it though. So. I think yeah, maybe yes. maybe replace the two with Jurgle. Yes. Um Yes. Go, Cyrus, think... go. Okay. I haven't been following chat, so audience, this is going to be as <laughs> much of a surprise for me as it is for you. Who, who wants to do uh, this? Okay, no, I'll Cyrus. I'll go. Yeah, sure. Um okay. free, I think, uh, Cyrus will <laughs> I kind of disdainfully uh, say the sentence because they they had a bit of a bad encounter uh, previously. I think a little <clears throat> right, right. Mm. Um, a squinger in the hand is worth a juggle in the cargo hold. <laughs> right? Can we can we just... pass now? Thank thank All you. All the air. <laughs> 
Uh, but also new merch. I <laughs> don't know that I want to put my, cause here's the thing. I, I know for a fact we're all defining Jurgle in very different ways. Yes. yes. I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to necessarily leave that up to the interpretation of the masses, lest this take on a, uh, I a think meaning that's perfect. That, that maybe we don't we don't support, but I already oh, feel fair. like I've lost control of this. So um, what what do I know? Ah, uh, yes. As the classic saying goes, a swinger in the hand is worth a jurgle in the cargo hold. Ordinarily, there's a little bit more give and take about this kind of thing, but also ordinarily they're dealing with goblins. So there is that moment as you approach where the two goblin guards, their goblin pikes outside the goblin mansion are giving you goblin eyes as you walk up, wondering what's going on. And then you just issue the passphrase. And then it's not a passphrase if like, you know, it doesn't always work if they have to question you about where you learned that. <clears throat> so you give the passphrase uh, and they are more than happy to let you inside. Now, I don't know what image of um, Bacchanalian, like goblin billionaire, uh, sleazy Elon Musk, what, sleazier Elon Musk wealth, what kind of decadence and hedonism and excess that would buy you? <gasps> oh my God, it's a goblin it, cheesecake factory. Yeah, but like literally a factory and not just cheesecake. <clears throat> you're approaching like Willy Wonka Wonderland kind of yeah like this is my house but it's also my whimsy emporium can we please say that with all of the money that he had he tried to improve his own body so now like there's different species around here and some of them had like multiple arms so he's an oil lord with like six arms <laughs> Of course, that's definitely biological canon that I'm sure exists in this world. Uh, so now we've gone from from Jabba the Hutt to um, like Octopus. Elder, yeah, like Dr. Octopus, and like kind of approaching like there's, it's taking on a little bit of a menace, like um, like an Elder God or or uh, in, who, who's in the one like the Marvel universe who like collects the different species and things. Oh, I know who you mean, but I can't remember. Orlock, no. Is I don't literally be... the collector. He's trying to become a sky squid, you guys. <gasps> With all the money in the world. The right. highest form of life. It all makes so much sense. So you approach the throne of this nascent sky squid god, having filled himself with so many goblin calories to get the bulk and having mastered the profane techno medical arts of joining your body with others. Um, I'm I'm going to say that goblins are not the best scientists in the world, so he's not doing a super great job, but I wouldn't bring that up because I'm guessing he's really sensitive about it. Oh. Well, regardless, when I see him, I get down on my knees, bow, and say, your holiness. <clears throat> I join in. I also do this. Okay, I, okay so Fuel King, Nascent Sky God, Oil Pope. Got Oil it. Pope. Oil <clears throat> Pope. Uh, there is obvious glee uh, on this goblin's face as you provide the appropriate supplication. And he says, yes, kneel before the oil god. Welcome. My lord, we are looking humbly asking for some of your services and some of your oil. <laughs> the oil king has many needs, but also many things to trade. What can you bring that will satisfy the needs of the great oil pope? Well, you see, because it is a known fact that you are trying to become the uh, largest and greatest of creations in this world. I am the largest! And the apologies, apologies, my lord. Takes the chandelier just from the ceiling. We humbly offer you uh, some of the uh, pieces of the specimen that might, uh, well, you see, we, you are the greatest specimen out there, and we didn't want you to have any uh, others to even try to rival you. So we slayed one of these beasts and bring its parts before you so that we may ask for only a tiny bit of your uh, oil uh, emporium. I, I step forward, having brought one of the squingers uh, with me and just kind of like have it draped over my shoulder 
and I just step forward and just heave it off my shoulder and just you hear it hit the floor with like a slop and it all but like also like the sound of suction cups like sticking to the floor yep mm -hmm. uh, he, he rises up from his throne and it, it's like watching him a spider unfurl like you don't know where this goblin went and studied like squid biology but he obviously did not pass that class <laughs> So it's, a, it's not a, a beautiful vision of, of squid glory. It's more like a childhood crayon drawing come to life, which is endearing, but also terrifying. Uh, the, the limbs are of different lengths. Some were a little, um, they'd gone a little off before they made it to the attachment process. Some of them are clearly not squids and he just didn't care at that point, or they just didn't care at that point. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, he unfurls, rolls to life, starts uh, teetering over, and it's when you realize the size of him. This goblin is enormous. Like, sitting, you don't get the full, but goblins can already stretch, and as, as the bulk expands, you see, like, new uh, limbs just, like, popping out, like, appearing out of nowhere. Oh, well, not from nowhere, but appearing out of places you did not see. And all of this punctuated by the glorious steepling of totally normal-sized goblin fingers in front of a totally normal goblin-sized face. Truly the most magnificent of us. Yes. Surely. Absolutely. And my king, it is an honor to be in your presence. Um, we have traveled a great long distance to be able to deliver unto you this imposter who dared to impose upon your glory. Um, we hope it is fitting tribute so that you may um, bestow upon us a modicum of your kindness. In indeed, my lord, and we as, as humble, lowly beings can yes. only ask for so much of you, of course. Uh, Lean into Snargle. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on right now? As the... Uh... As you're having, you know, you're giving off this, um, these little speeches, and then the oil uh, lord is, uh, the oil pope. God, <laughs> you know, when, when you're when you have this much size, like the honorifics, they just pour in and they stack up and they get mixed around. Mm. So as you're having this conversation, um, the various pieces and parts are moving to get different angles on the squid bits, but also you. So as the conversation proceeds, in one moment, like the the neck stretches up and out, and it like kind of peers in between. Um, um, like Nathaniel and Naomi looking over and they says tell me the story of how the beast fell because the oil pope shall not include any inferior specimens inside his glorious corpulence of, of course my lord I, I would never bring to you a, a subpar specimen I can assure you myself and uh, my crew uh, captained by the illustrious uh, Captain Vance here, we uh, have slain many a beast on our quest to find the greatest example the skies could offer. This creature came upon us in the middle of this open skies uh, and we found ourselves beset. This was the first creature to offer us challenge. Ever since we have left our territory known as home, we have stomped our way through creatures greater than planets. But this beast, this gave us a fight. And it was only with a most daring and noble heroic shot, which I will let my dear captain describe herself, that we managed to fell it. Without her intervention, we would have all died. Uh, the goblin uh, head retreats from between the two of you and then um, uh, Cyrus, you, you feel this presence behind you and then the neck stretches up and over your head to come down in front of you so it's like upside down as it swoops over and he says I am intrigued yes captain tell me of this shot was it glorious? I think uh, before all of this, and while he was uh, looking at Nathaniel, while Nathaniel was speaking, um, Captain would have been confused for a second uh, as he started explaining, but then sort of like just look in awe at Nathaniel because Nathaniel called it my crew. 
and um, started talking about this as if he was part of the crew and stuff like that. Uh, so Captain was just like looking like, fuck, that's hot. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but coming back to your senses as uh, the, sc- the squid lord um, lowers his gaze upon me, I say, my lord, it was a, a, a grandious, uh, a an exquisite shot, uh, helped by my or goblin friend here, who who maneuvered our way almost into the maw of this squid, and then with a a finely pointed gunshot, even two gunshots and fire coming from us, we blew the squid to bits and managed to rip out its uh, many intestines. Because a a squid has many intestines. Yes, this is known! (laughs) So cool. This is fine that everybody is taking credit and not giving any to me. Naomi, you should bow lower for our lord. I carried the fucking squinger here, bitch. But we are all lowly beings in the eyes of our lord. Uh, Don't worry, uh, V. I have a present for you already just like back here. Ready to go. Great, thank you. Would you like? Would you like it now? Uh, I mean, is it dramatically appropriate? I it will be dramatically appropriate whenever <laughs> I say it. I'm just great. Based, I, well, I don't know. If dramatic is the right word. I know five of us are going to really enjoy it. Um, I, I'm I'm kind of up in the air on how the last person is going to feel about it, but I'm ready whenever you are. Very concerned that I'm the last person. No, actually, very concerned in that, that list. I am the last person. <laughs> I mean, I guess go on ahead. Yeah, let's hear it. I am I am excited. <laughs> so as you you have given this tale of splendor and wonder, and the thing is, as as you continue to speak, um this goblin is obviously very, very wealthy, but obviously also a fucking idiot because he's just soaking. He has no idea how this thing works. You contestants, sure, I'm here for it. Squid hands, yeah, I saw that in a book once, definitely for sure. Of course, he will believe absolutely anything uh, that you tell him because, uh, as is true of all rich people, they are fucking useless, socialite, uh, terrible human beings who have no connection to reality. No offense to any nobles among us. I'm also, if you're a billionaire in the audience, I don't mean it. Feel free to sponsor us on patreon.qcg. Anyway, as these uh, stories build and build and build, and you add these embellishments, eventually uh, the oil king just, he he says, enough, you have convinced me, and I shall allow you to adorn me with your splendor. You, the strongest and the tallest, approach and attach. And he sp- unsp- they unspread themselves into the, the full beauty, like staring up into a star, except the star is hideous and misshapen and flabby. And he awaits your tribute. I have one question before I do this, and this is, this is an above table conversation, not an in character question. Um, why did you think that giving me the opportunity to attach the squinger to this goblin um, was equal in value to um, getting credit for killing the sky squid or being involved in that story. I just, I'm asking as like a friend um, and as the person that now has to do this. Well, as any good, um, as any student drama will tell you, the spotlight does not always find us in the moments that we wish to be highlighted. And sometimes it's about making the most of the scene that you're given. Not everyone wants to be the hero, V. Sometimes people have to be the villain, or in this case, uh, the ones who are forced to attach um, a dead squid's appendage to a megalomaniacal evil scientist goblin. All I have to say is if I see Naomi attach a, a squinger onto the oil pope, it is going to like that's going to solidify it. I'm going to ask this woman to marry me uh, at some point soon, very soon. <laughs> Talking of being a villain in a scene, this, this oil pope, you got any pockets? Um, I want to say he, he's all pockets. Have you seen pocket. him? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to say like yes, comma, but and this is important. <laughs> they're all fleshy. Oh, okay. I'm not, I'm not about that. Don't, I, I'm not, I have, I have a word in my head. I'm not going to say it because mm-hmm. Twitch, but. I will tell you, just, sorry. 
I will tell you though, uh, Kale, if you are are feeling um, felonious, Always. there are I, there is splendor abounds. Mm -hmm. It's a collection of, of all the things that this uh, this oil baron finds thinks are valuable, and some of them, perhaps just by accident, actually are. Uh, so if you could um, you could find something, I'm sure you could appraise something of good value if you wanted to um, abscond with it, as they well, say. This, this uh, wonderful scene of, of great splendor of squid arm attachment is is happening. I will use such a uh, a uh, great, uh, great and incredible scene to uh, to slip away uh, into to the edge of the room and, and have a look around and have a peek at what what things are on display. Well, I'm going to let Naomi buy you some time to think about what you find and what makes it valuable because right now, ladies and gentlemen, here on Twitch, also on YouTube, if you're listening on podcast, prepare yourself for the telling of a tale that will live on for centuries. Naomi, how and where do you attach the squinger? V's going to come out of this entering her villain arc. That's all I'm saying. <clears throat> I am just filled with so many negative emotions in this moment, uh, but I see the the look on Snargle's face that just is like, oh, I just, he just, there, there's just this look of... I, I don't even know what you would call it, but he's just kind of enamored in this moment. Uh, and and I see that cocky little grin on Cyrus's face because I know that she is just having a blast with what's about to happen. So I walk over to the swinger, which has suction cupped itself to the floor because of course it has, or is the floor just sticky? I don't, never mind. I'm not going to answer that question. But I lean down and I hoist up the squinger as best I can. It takes a little bit of time and I have to kind of like pull at it a little bit because of course suction cups. And finally, once it is up and over my shoulder again, I walk over and there's this big, big area uh, that I, I think I saw him actually create the space, kind of like move space around because the squinger is quite large. Um, but there's now like a, an empty space that's kind of like purpley and like actually has a little bit of like moss growing on it which is very very strange um I'm it's probably from the pool floaties and as I get close and kind of bring the squinger close there's this weird sort of rippling effect from underneath the skin as these little like not not tentacles themselves but kind of just like little fibrous things come yeah, yeah. out from underneath the skin uh, to kind of grab onto the the severed part of the squinger. You're, you're talking about flesh velcro. Aaron, I don't like flesh velcro. <laughs> flesh velcro. I just wanted to say it. Flelcro. Flelcro. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Fl Flelcro's a trademark. We don't, mm -mm. you're going to get us taken off Twitch. <laughs> You know what? <laughs> That's, That's a, a brand point. name. Oh no! I suppose I suppose to uh, to totally avoid any uh, kind of copyright infringement, it would be flesh hook and loop fastener. Yes. I'm very upset right now, but yes, that's exactly what what's happening. Uh, and 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 this the squinger itself is is blue, and of course, like I mentioned, the the body is is purple. And as the little fibrous pieces, I'm not going to say it, as the little fibrous pieces come out and start grabbing on to bits of the swinger and, and making little fibrous bits of their own to attach, there's, it kind of braids itself and then mm -hmm. coils in as the swinger kind of like gets situated in this little pocket. And then once it's there, there's a little like hump of flesh that kind of forms up around it uh, to kind of like keep that safe as it's going to like heal and and really solidify itself in there. This is me. He invented the chat. I'm 100 percent here for it. The only thing you're missing is the sound because you're gonna get nope. that that like. I'm not missing the sound. I'm not missing like the sound. You... I hear the sound in my head. I don't need it. I, thank you. Nope. I'm not missing it. I just that, chose like, not when, to when describe you, when it. You, when you when you have like when you have like a rain boot on, and you step into some mud and you pull mm -hmm. up, and it's that really like syrupy thick like schlock sound yeah that's yep. we're getting. yeah oh, i accidentally yeah. killed syrinx in the corner there i apologize <clears throat> the 
the oil lord is, of course, thrilled. And as he cackles with thunderous glee, and you see everything all jiggling joyously in unison. I don't know that he's been, they've been this happy in, in a long, long time. And in fact, so happy that nobody as the Squid King, perhaps the cat or the crew, but definitely not the Squid King, no one's going to notice you sneaking off to accomplish a thieving. Kale, my friend. Yay. The oil lord's riches are numerous from the many far-flung corners of the great blue yonder. What caught your eye? Um, I think a lot of the stuff <clears throat> that he has on display is flashy, but not that valuable. It's the stuff that, you know, is like glass instead of gems and some of the stuff that might appeal to a man such as uh, the oil, wonderful sky squid, horrible <laughs> tentacle king man, but not much to the likes of myself. However, sitting on, I think, a little pedestal in one corner is something that catches my eye as both something that has has appealed to the Squid Lord and also is valuable is um, maybe kind of yay, yay long uh, blade, the handle of which is carved to resemble uh, a sky squid. And it's got like the tentacles that curve round to the blade and the handle is like the the pointed head of the squid. It's a beautifully made piece. There's two dark blue gems where the eyes are. And that is by far the most valuable thing in the room. And as this wonderful ceremony of construction is taking place across the room, I would like to check around first to see if there are any kind of defensive measures on this display piece uh, before as delicately and as quietly as I can picking it off the pedestal and just slipping it into my jacket. Uh, that is amazing. I gotta say flashy but not valuable or appealing is like my aesthetic so I appreciate <laughs> us going there. Uh, second, um, the guards inside are, are it's, this is not like an organized professional institution, right? These are people who are employed by a like delusional megalomaniacal. It's not about proficiency of arms or attention to detail. It's about sycophancy and having managed to not get absorbed into his girth or their, their mass uh, so far. Um, I would like to know, is this an ornamental blade or is it actually functional? Could you, could you do some work with it? I think it's functional. Yeah, I think like, it's probably a little dulled from being on display, but but with a, a, just a, a minimal amount of, of sharpening and maintenance, this this could be used. I think that's what that's what attracts attracts Kale to it. He he likes his daggers, he likes his blades, and that's what that's what what catches his eye about it. Eyes like a boo in uh, in Aladdin, just like reaching out for the gem. <laughs> well, my friend, uh, you have that dice pool together. Go ahead and give me a roll. I do. Uh, I'll just count it up again. Sorry. This is seven, eight. Uh, okay. Um, just to be clear. I'm not adding anything to my pool from this. I mean, I don't know. Like one one from Naomi doing a really great job attaching the swinger. Aaron said yourself that like you are using the cover. Yeah. Uh, I, could, uh, I, could, that... I could add an extra D6 to my already Well, so weapon. point of order. It's not that you get to add one for free. It's that Naomi gives you one of her pool points. Yeah. So... <clears throat> um, but I think the dice have already gone through, and uh, you report five successes. I do. I'm well, very good at stealing shit. <laughs> and thank God for that. Um, someday it might benefit the whole crew and not just you, but today is not that day. 
Meanwhile, camera cut. And I, I love this because we we have the camera like uh, stationed over on the side of the room where Kale is going about this, and then like you, it's it's focused on you performing your 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 acts of larceny, but over the shoulder you can still see the glorious. Yes, the attachment has succeeded. My powder grows. <laughs> <laughs> happening behind and as soon as i've done it you know just very very quietly just like tuck it into my shirt and then make my way back over and like oh yes the wonder of this thing mm. <laughs> this, 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 this ridiculous fucking this thing. character <laughs> this fucking thing i find your tribute to be worthy of my oh, the word escapes me uh uh, large ass! There it is. I shall provide you with one goblin kilogram of fuel for every goblin kilogram you have provided my glory. Tell me the name of your ship and the dock it may be found on so that I might bequeath upon you my splendor! Yes, of course, my lord, we humbly thank you for this uh, acceptance of our offering. Um, our ship will be found as the owl in uh, the docking area where uh, a bunch of, uh, where Jerndal is at this moment. You know Jerndal, my lord, of course. Jerndal, my favorite faithful servant. Jerndal and I went to high school together. Obviously, we have taken different life paths, but he remains useful and a good friend. That reminds me, I should send his wife flowers soon. It is her birthday. Well, his <laughs> wife is foolish, my lord, to choose him over you in all your splendor. Ah, I appreciate your flattery, but the, the, the oil lord does not require it. This form has exceeded the needs of attention of and juggling, that nature. And juggling, of course. Ah, uh, no! no well, you are insane! The, the squids. <laughs> there are only two kinds of goblins in this universe. Those who jurgle and those who lie and say they don't. <laughs> Go fucking Christ. Okay. Um, well, there's, there, cause there's a very... Uh, um, uh, the, the, the courtly procedure of removing yourself from a situation because, in point of fact, the longer you... Like, he's not going to not talk to you. And, and the longer you do this, the longer it's going to go on. So there's going to be a very delicate matter of doing the diplomatic effort of extracting yourself from the situation so you can go make your meeting. And because this game would be nothing without obstacles, I'm going to ask somebody, somebody perhaps experienced in, um, in such affairs, to tell me how you get out of a conversation you desperately don't want to be in anymore. Yes. Um, you see, this is, again, this is the one sort of good thing about growing up surrounded by uh, liars and terrible people is that when you're done talking to the liars and terrible people, you talk like a liar and a terrible person in order to get them to leave you alone. Um, so, so I will, I will bow exceedingly deeply um, and say, but we have taken up so much of your time, my good king. I would not infringe upon your glory any longer. I am sure running your estate takes many hours of great work and I would not keep you from it. Um, I thank you so much for your time. And I hope that this is not our last, our last encounter. Thank you so much for your, for all of, all of the kindness you've bestowed upon me and mine today. Each of these words coming as you take one further step backwards, yep. just like slowly. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back it away. It's gonna go. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, I will give the rest of you the benefit of the doubt to say that you can you can pick up what our Lord friend is putting down. What is uh, each of you in turn? And uh, I will start with Zoe. Once you're out of the the manor. And, and probably out of the earshot of the guards. First sentence you blurt out. And as a matter of cinema, I'm imagining there's this tense silence and then you all, all at once let your emotions out. So I'm gonna get them in turn, but for the purposes of the conversation, we can say that this has all happened all at once. You know, meeting all of you has been the best thing in my life because without all of you, without all, I would never have seen the oil pope. Thank you. 
for being beside me and defeating the sky squid so that we may have this joyous and elated day. I'm truly the luckiest goblin ever. You could come here, hugs, and I grow uh, really long and tall, lanky, so I can wrap everyone around in a hug all at once. Next. Okay, I feel I feel violated in every single sense of the word. Oh my goodness, I think I think I think it got on me. I think some I think some of the, the uh, juggle some some of what he juggled is now upon my person in some way, shape, or form. I would oh I need a million years bath right now. Oh my goodness, we're bit oh lord. Okay, okay, thank you. Yes, love you too, Snuggle. Okay. <laughs> Kale's, uh, Cyrus? I think Kale just, um, <clears throat> like, as it, once we're out of the vicinity of the, like, sight and sound of the guard, just, just reaches into his shirt and pulls out the knife and just sort of spins it a few times and goes, hmm, it's pretty good. Oh, shit! And then, like, the, the hug goes in and, like, pulls it away so it doesn't accidentally stab into anyone. Uh, hugs and knives, famous enemies. Um, my turn. <laughs> Uh, as I uh, leave the building, I'm like, fuck, that's an ugly bastard. Two of the things I hate the most, squids and two rich people. Also, Nathaniel, that was hot as fuck. Okay, yeah, yeah, snorkel, hug, yeah. <laughs> I actually don't say anything at all. I just let out a really big sigh and just like start taking off my jacket because, you know, sky squid shit all over my shoulder from where I hoisted the thing and I'm, I'm taking off my jacket and I kind of start balling it up because ugh, I'm ready to just drop it on the floor when the hug comes in and I just ugh, ugh, okay fine whatever I have one visual request um given that I was kind of like quiet during that because I imagine Snargle was just so entranced by meeting the the oil baron. Um, I like to imagine the tubing which provides fuel to the owl is going to be haphazardly sprawling across the city over like different streets and whatnot. I would love to see that. Uh, no, I really do need you to talk and fill the time and push because, like, the lawnmower is coming up and, like, that's the sound of the lawnmower right there. Oh, boy. Oof. Got it. Got it. Oh, well, that was a thing. Love that for us. Hey. Oh, yeah, for us. Thing, not a person. For us. Sure. Well, well we got um, leave, right? Yes. That, uh, Hopefully. a fuel. Um, we need a guide, which uh, we're working on. Um, provisions, uh, I think we got that covered as well. Cool. <sighs> Did you grab more bottles of rosies? It's kind of hard to find. I can I can go for the knockoff stuff. And I'll be honest, uh, when I told that guy that that was rosies earlier, I may have not been telling the truth. Snargle, Snargle my you man. lied? Josie's, but like yeah, that's the off-brand. Yeah, it's it's taste the same. Like they 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 taste test it in front of people, and uh, they, they always they can never tell which one is which. But for some reason, Rosie's gets all of the rap. Mm. It's like uh yeah, it, you know it's it's like the original versus like the off-brand, right? Like the off-brand, you're just like no, it tastes exactly the same. And people are like no, I can tell, and they can't actually tell. Exactly. Same exactly. idea, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah uh, maybe he didn't have Rosie's. I can't afford Rosie's. I'll just get some off-brand. It's like those people virus who say that they can taste a difference in water brands, but you guys, it's just water, you know? Oh, there's no, there's water. definitely a difference in water. It, there's not really. No, there's you know 100%. Says, you know there's 100% a difference, there's a difference in, water. in water brands? There's 100% people who actually have the, the bajingas to uh, spend money on expensive water brands. Like, I don't want your Fiji Are water. Are you jealous? Get out of here. Are you jealous that you can't? Is that what... 
Is that what we're saying? That you're as jealous endearing as the as the talking over one another about about water is is as much as that contributes to the story. Um, I want to put a slight pause in there because there is one topic that we haven't addressed, a curiosity that I have that seems to have escaped the rest of you. Who the fuck is Ambrose? Why does Kale know them? And why am I the only one who wants to know the answer to that question? You've all taken for for I mean, like maybe it's a sign of trust that's developed between the crew, but Naomi doesn't strike me as the kind of person who like trusts generally. Um, and now specifically, uh, Snargle, possessed of a, of a goblinoid curiosity, Cyrus, your ship at risk, and you're all just gonna like go and follow this guy. I mean, I'm a part of a pirate crew, so if somebody knows a guy, it's generally fine, especially if that person is somebody that's trusted by the captain. I don't trust Cyrus farther than I can throw her, and let me tell you, I, I mean, actually, no, I, I trust her much less than that, because I can throw her very, very far. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, but if Cyrus trusts Kale enough, and Kale trusts this Ambrose person, who am I to question it? You know, I've known Kale for a little while. I know what Kale's about a little bit. A little, I mean, like, there's still secrets between us. We're not that close, but we're close. It's a... Ambrose is a man living in the hard goodbye, and we had to go to a thieves' den in order to find him. I think I know who I'm running into, but I will be pleasantly surprised depending on who shows up. Okay, so I just made up the part where anyone cares, and you're all totally willing to go walk in, sight unseen, utterly blind, no preparation, into a midnight meeting with a total stranger in the middle of, like, crime land, uh, goblin, uh, Look okay. Face. Who can't trust this okay. face? Sounds about I'm, right, yeah. I, I believe you when you say it, I'm just surprised is all. I think this sounds like a splendid idea. Thank you. And I... I mean, I guess, like, I kind of appreciate, like, um, not the naivete, but uh, the expectation that this being a goblin town and you being Sky Pirates, some of you more recently than others, that these are just kind of things that happen and you have to roll with them. But it's a risk that you take, right? I 100% believe that as the time passes and you you slowly recover mentally and emotionally from your encounter with um, the Goblin Oil King, you come back to your senses. You have the small conversations to kind of let the tension out and then you're back on it. Kale looking for things to steal, Nathaniel taking in all the great myriad splendors of how poor people live. Uh, Cyrus, I always on adventure, and Naomi, I on people who might be causing you threat, and Snargle just basking in the raw, unfiltered miasma of goblin kind. <clears throat> when you arrive at the soda spewing whale fountain at the appropriate time, Snargle, the crown has grown a lot since you remember it. I don't, is it more candy? Is it more moss? Who knows? But the crown is starting to get about the size of the whale. I need to get a bigger statue. And Kale, you will see your friend there. Standing arms crossed, leaning up against one of the... Uh, not leaning, because you can't lean on a, on a fountain, you'd be in the water. Actually, I'm not a idiot. sticky one. <clears throat> yeah, I'm standing definitely not close enough to the fountain where they would risk their outfit. Waiting. And maybe you are overjoyed. Uh, to see an old friend. Maybe you're overwhelmed with thoughts of a previous life. And the rest of you, I don't know what's going to, uh, what explanation, what excuse you will give in the future uh, that seeks to um, uncover the reason why you didn't notice the other people in the crowd, the ones paying a little bit too much attention to the person known as Ambrose, the ones who were not milling about idly or just merely passing through the areas, the ones who lurked in alleyways on street corners pretending to uh, shop around uh, a merchant's wares. Because there will come a moment, Kale, where you walk up to your old friend to introduce yourself. And then, an imperial voice 
saying, just like you said, Captain, we've got them now. We will pause there just be just after the announcement, just before the gunfire. And next week when we return, we can ask ourselves the questions that how did Captain Hollis know you would come here? What Imperial warship was fast enough to bring him? How is Ambrose involved? And most importantly, how will our friends escape? As always, I am Aaron, your storyteller. I have been joined tonight by some wonderful, if not maybe a little dirty, crew members playing the ever wonderful Goblinoid Sky pilot, Zoe. Have a great night, everyone. Graciously giving her the late hour, graciously giving us the late hours of her evening, Syrinx. Ciao. Beautifully costumed. Rowan here is Kale Arkham. The dapper and delightful Nathaniel Blackbird, played by the dapper and delightful Gabriel. Good night, everyone. And Queen of Fists and Flesh Velcro, the wonderful Naomi Bishop, played by me. I don't think I want that title. Can we workshop that title, please? Yeah, we can get back. Okay, thank you. Well, like I said, next week we have adventures to answer, new nicknames to hand out. In the meantime, in between time, if you have enjoyed this, follow us at Queen's Court Games uh, on Twitter. Follow uh, exclamation point cast in the chat to see what's going on. Or if you want to be a real, true lord, lady, or non-binary noble, noble of incredible appeal, head on over to patreon.com slash Queen's Court Games. For $5 a month, you can A, give more of your money to us as opposed to like giving half of it to Jeff Bezos and half to us and also you get cooler rewards weekly postcards wallpapers all kinds of things from us to you that said we are all going to take off get ready for our next sky adventure from us to you good night for now <laughs>